It's actually a lot of fun being here with, uh, what, 20% of the world's container fleets are actually owned by Greek companies. Uh, and this is kind of the original headquarters of the shipping world. Uh, so it's very interesting to be here. Uh, and we wanted to discuss the problem that uh, really, you know, attacking it from a decentralized aspect of how the shipping industry can really be solved, so to speak, with all the fracturing that takes place today. So ShipChain is making transport and logistics a bit more effective by, uh, with secure and transparent blockchain technology. Uh, our solution requires a deep technology answer to, with a simple solution, though. So we're trying to do end-to-end -end track and trace visibility across the entire industry. So what are the problems with the industry right now? There's no unified tracking layer. There's no way that from point A to point B, I can see every step without having to go through proprietary systems, and even those aren't always accurate. So for instance, if I were to import something from China to the United States, it may go through five, seven, 10, even more different independent companies that all have specific systems that don't really talk that well to each other. And as a result of that, visibility is very limited. I have an experience and background in this myself, having had uh, you know, previous clients in my other business, just their inventory imports would suddenly stop tracking, stop moving. Uh, as a result of that, with that lack of visibility comes theft and fraud. Within the United States alone, over $30 billion in annual losses due to freight theft and fraud alone, increasing uh, consumer pricing of just even staple goods by up to 20%. Markup. Brokers in the freight industry charge significant premiums. So these brokers come in, they try to facilitate this market because, for instance, in the United States alone, uh, no company controls more than 2% of the trucking industry. So it shows you it's very fractured and, in, in a way, decentralized already. But these freight brokers try to come in the middle, charge up to 50% markups at times, increasing the cost, making it much less visible for everyone involved, and are often, uh, you know, in the end, the consumers pay the cost. And of course, the lack of visibility as a result of all of this. So right now, the entire way that uh, the shipping industry is working is that everyone's connected, but nobody's talking to each other. So everyone will submit an EDI transaction, which stands for Electronic Data Interchange. EDI is an extremely old technology. When I say extremely old, it was developed in 1947 to use with the Berlin Airlift. This is what we're still using today, and it's developed into you know, a very fractured standard of sorts. So there's multiple different agencies that are tasked with uh, maintaining EDI, including, uh, but not limited to, the United States federal government, the European Union, and the United Nations. All have different standards of EDI that don't necessarily communicate very well with each other. And on top of that, many large corporations have also developed their own variations of the standards. So when you're working with them, sometimes you have to change things just to fit their specific version of EDI. It's a bit ridiculous. So there's a lot of consequences as a result of this. You know, there's no transparency. Where is my cargo? Where, how is it being handled? Who damaged it along the way? That's another problem that a lot of uh, companies don't really realize is that as a result of all of this fracturing and this lack of transparency, let's say halfway through a transaction, through a shipment, there's damage done to it. Well, whose fault is it? This company is not gonna take uh, responsibility for it. This company is not gonna take responsibility for it. As a result, the receiver is the one that's probably going to pay more. The insurance company doesn't wanna take responsibility or pay out the claim simply because none of these companies have the information and none of them want to reveal who actually caused the problem. Will my cargo arrive on time in the right condition? So same thing there. It's uh, just a lack of visibility. You have no idea where things are in the process. Collaboration. All of these companies, like you said, are communicating but not with each other. So there's no real collaboration in the market itself. And what we're trying to do is remove those uncertainties and try to bring everyone together onto an easy enough public blockchain platform. So of course, why blockchain in this? You know, we also often get that question from people in the logistics industry itself. Because it increases traceability, a single unified layer allows for communication and visibility and efficiency for all the shippers, the carriers, everyone involved in the process. Security allows for encoded geographic data, documentation proof, everything else that comes with it, uh, and the operators themselves to allow for safe and efficient delivery. 
uh, parity and unification of the platform so everyone can come together on smart contracts that are decentralized rather than through individual brokers that are facilitating transactions and taking that large markup. And we've built ourselves on top of Ethereum for a reason. We are big supporters of public blockchains because we feel that the killer app of this revolution is not blockchain itself. It's the decentralization that comes with blockchain. So as a result, private blockchains, consortium blockchains, often called permissioned, they're not decentralized. Somebody still has control of it. Someone can be the gatekeeper. Someone can be a competitor of yours and keep you out so you don't get access to this potentially industry-changing technology. Uh, it's basically a centralized database solution, and as of right now, it is a bit faster, but that is changing. Uh, with public blockchains, the decentralized aspect of it is key, making it so that nobody can interfere with anyone else's transactions, shipments, uh, see anything that's going on, identify the other without having that key access to it. So what we're doing is we are making it so that existing systems are connected with a, a layer on top of blockchain that we're calling our transmission API. We have built on top of Ethereum, so there is a decentralized layer underneath us with the smart contracts that facilitate these transactions. So anyone can join those without our permission. Anyone can use the ShipChain platform without having to talk to us in any way. They can develop on top of it. At the same time, we understand that the shipping industry may not be, at times, the most tech savvy, and we want to make it as easy as possible for these companies to enroll and be a part of it. So we've built one of the earliest ways of uh, a REST API communicating with the Ethereum network itself so that these documents and information can be posted to it in an easy way that developers are familiar with without having to learn Solidity. So the end goal here is to unify everything across that single platform and remove the need for uh, standardless standards, as we're calling them, such as EDI. So how does that work, and how does that look in the end here? In an, initially, there will be vehicle trackers that are on commercial vehicles. Now, whether we make those or not, we don't plan to be a hardware company. We want to issue the standards and make it so that everyone can participate. Uh, everything from GPS updates, pressure and temperature sensors, configurable alarms for door open, container open, uh, and track the exact time and place that that occurred. Uh, everyone from rail traffic controllers, truck lines, port officials, shippers, fleet managers will have access to that. Uh, for an ease of use system, there will be a front end portal service, so on the web for enterprises and small and medium sized businesses alike. Uh, the engine and transmission services are what I've discussed. So the transmission is the API and the engine is what connects it to the Ethereum network. Uh, create and submit transactions, uh, simplifying blockchain interactions, connecting web 2 to web 3 is what we're calling it. Uh, identity management systems, so having profiles on the, on, on the blockchain itself. So we're calling it the, 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 the profile contract where everyone can interact with it, everyone gets a profile. Uh, from the truck drivers to the fleet operators to the receivers, the shippers, warehouse operators, everyone can participate in that. Uh, and along with that, and the reason that we're doing that is so that everyone can participate but also rate each other in transactions. For instance, a good example is let's say I drive a truck and I'm there to pick up a shipment of lettuce. The problem right now is that if the warehouse operator makes me sit for three or four hours, it's a waste of fuel, so it's very inefficient. It's a waste of my time, and I'm not making as much money. Uh, my company that I'm working for is losing money as a result of it, too. I want to be able to rate that warehouse that they've made me sit for three to four hours waiting for a load so that everyone else now can see, okay, well, there's a bad process here. We want to make sure that either A, we charge them more, or B, we don't work with them at all. Uh, so that's a part of our smart contract ecosystem. And what we're doing also with the document side of things, so we understand that there are some concerns with corporations having retention policies. Documents going on an immutable blockchain is a bit of a concern. We've been talking with several corporations that have, for instance, a five-year data retention policy. After that five years, they're required to delete everything documentation-wise that they have uh, for various reasons, including regulatory compliance, privacy, et cetera. Well, how do you prove that the document has not undergone any changes while still being compliant with everything from corporate policies even on to HIPAA, FERPA, uh, et cetera? Well, we're storing that off-chain in what we're calling vaults. 
Um, so you can save your data wherever you want it to. It can be an internal network that's secure. It can be Amazon S3, IPFS, Swarm, etc. Only the hashes of the document itself are stored to the blockchain. And the reason for that is that we allow for, first off, lower cost of actual documentation veracity, because posting full documents, you know, large bills of lading, et cetera, to the public blockchain is very expensive and very time consuming. Uh, it's really unnecessary at this stage, we feel, uh, and, but I'd be happy to have someone come change my mind. The way that the vault works is that on chain, only the bill of lading is stored. So if there is a change, uh, only the hash of the bill of lading is stored. So if there is a change to the bill of lading itself, at that time, the hash would also change. So in the future, let's say that document is deleted five years from now. Uh, how do we prove that we never tampered with that document? Well, we have the hash verifying that the, A, the document existed, B, we never tampered with it. So if there's any sort of regulatory compliance questions out there, we can verify the veracity of it. And that comes into play with, uh, interestingly enough, I believe I read a statistic the other day that 44% of freight and fleet managers still rely on Microsoft Excel exclusively for their entire business. And in my background, some are still running on pen and paper. So we want to verify and have the truth of the actual information out there so that someone can't just come and edit a cell in a spreadsheet or erase something very easily. Uh, along with that, we are working to provide for larger scale companies a uh, business intelligence platform. So bringing in all of these public sources of data that are stored on uh, everything from your internal data silos that you, you know, we're trying to eliminate those internal silos, uh, bring it all together into one easy to use system where you can make decisions and make easier decisions based on the, uh, the information that's provided in smart analytics. Uh, and that's really all I had. If you want to check us out, we've open sourced quite a bit. Uh, please check out our GitHub and follow us on social media. Uh, we'd love your input. And uh, you know, if you're a developer, please tear us apart. Thank you. Absolutely. Great work. Thank you. Lack of visibility, huge, huge data around from suppliers and everything, compliance, flexibility uh, needs to be addressed. I think blockchain is a great benefit to if they work with uh, a supply chain together. Um, any questions? Yes. Hi, uh, great work uh, on uh on your uh, project, it will bring uh, supply chain light years ahead for shipping. Uh, one technical question. Um, you mentioned that data is stored uh, on-premise, and you also mentioned about uh, the ability for users to, to delete uh, that data under circumstances. How did you overcome uh, uh, revoking access to data that is stored in different places? Well, that's still on their private storage of data. So the, the actual document has never posted itself to the blockchain, so there's no access to revoke in the first place. There's only the proof that the document exists and was not tampered with. Yeah, I, I mean for the data that has been provided to the third party and he has it locally stored. Oh, if they're, if they're a part of a transaction, they would have key access to it. So they would be a part of that shipment anyway, so revoking access to someone that's a part of a shipment is not necessary. Uh, for instance, right now, if I'm working with a freight forwarder, I will permanently have access to the, ship the data from that shipment. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Anything about passenger shipping? About what, I'm sorry? About uh, shipping of passengers. Uh, passengers, I mean, we feel that it could be applied to passengers at the same time, just like freight. Uh, it just depends on what the needs are, and uh, it's not been our focus, but we'd be happy to discuss it. Yep. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.